Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome back as we continue to write the hash function. So in the last video I covered a couple of important topics. And so the first important thing that I covered was I showed you guys how we can find the length of the string that we're passing into the hash function. And then the second important thing that I covered was I basically showed you guys how we can convert a single character that's stored in that string, how we can convert one of those characters into an integer value. And so we're going to use those two techniques to go ahead and write the hash function. So let's go ahead and run uh, the program so we can see what's happening again. So in the, main, uh, in the main program right now, what I have is I am passing in my name into the hash function. And so the hash function is basically saying key 0 equals 80. And so what that is, is key 0 holds the first character in the string. And so the first character in the string of my name would be the capital P. So capital P has an ASCII value of 80. And then key 1 holds the second character in my name. And so that would be the lowercase a, which has an ASCII value of 97. And then uh, the lowercase u has an ASCII value of 117. And the lowercase l has an ASCII value of 108. And so the index is basically right now, it's just holding the length of the string that we're passing in, or the number of characters in the string. So that's OK for now. We'll go ahead and change that before the video is over. But basically, if you were to take 80, add it to 97, add it to 117, and add it to 108, you would find that that equals 402. And so we're just going to kind of create a simple hash function. And the first thing it's going to do is it's just going to add the characters together in uh, the string that we pass in. So let's just go ahead and uh, we're passing in my name still, so that should be 402 when we add all those up. So let's just go ahead and start doing uh, some code to make that happen. So we're going to do a for loop and create a new integer variable, call it i, set it equal to 0 initially. And then as long as i is less than the length of the string that we're passing in, we're going to go ahead and do all the stuff in the for loop, and then at the very end of the for loop, we're going to basically say i++, plus plus, which adds 1 to the value that's stored in the variable i. So what we want to do for this hash function, what I've decided to do is just we're just going to add up all of the ASCII values um, in all the characters that are in the string. So for my name, that should equal 402. So let's go ahead and just do that for starters. And so I've got this. In integer variable called hash here, I initially set it equal to zero. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say hash equals hash plus the integer value or the ASCII value of whatever character in the string we're currently looking at. So basically, we're passing in my name, and so the capital P is the first character, so that's going to be key zero. And so it has an ASCII value of 80. So the first time through, hash is initially equal to 0. So basically, hash is going to store 0 plus the ASCII value of the capital P. So it's 0 plus 80. And then that gets stored in the hash variable. So the second time it goes through the for loop, hash is going to be equal to 80. And then it gets added to the ASCII value of the lowercase a. And then those two added together get stored in the hash value. And it just keeps on adding up like that until we've basically covered all the characters in the string. So let's just go ahead and put a print statement in here so we can see what's happening as uh, this for loop processes. So we're going to say hash equals, and then we're going to basically print to the screen whatever value is currently in the hash variable. And then we're going to print out an end line so that everything looks nice. And so we're still just uh, returning the length of the string for our index. So that's no big deal. We'll change that in a little bit. But let's just go ahead and run the program, and we can see exactly what's happening as we go through this for loop. So initially, hash is equal to 80 the first time through the for loop, and that represents the capital P. Then you add the ASCII value of the, cap of the lowercase a, and then the lowercase u, and the lowercase l, and finally you get hash equals 402. And index is still holding the length of the string or the number of characters in the string. So everything looks good there. So now let's go ahead and define a table size for our hash table. So in hash.h, I'm going to create a private section. And so in the private section, we're just going to simply create a new integer variable and we're going to call it table size. And this will just determine the size of the hash table we want to work with. So in the public section, now we're going to need to create a constructor. So we're just going to type in the name of our class, 
opening and closing uh, parentheses and then end it with a semicolon. So now that we've done that, we can go to hash.cpp and then above our hash function here, I'm just going to create the constructor, which is simply just going to initialize our table size right now. So we're defining this from the hash class, so we do hash colon colon, and then we're doing the constructor, so we select that one right there. And let's go ahead and define it inside these curly braces. And so all our constructor is going to do is it's basically just going to set the table size to whatever we want it to be. So I'm just going to have the table size be 100. So that's going to be the size of our hash table. If we want to modify it, we can change this number here now. And so now, what we're going to do is instead of index returning the length of the string now, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that part. So we don't want the index to return the length of the string anymore. Now what we want index to do is we basically want index to return some number that basically represents the index value, the location where we want our information to be stored in our hash table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say index equals hash and then I'm going to say percent and then table size. So what's happening here now is basically hash percent table size what we're doing is we're just saying that uh, so hash is going to be 402 when we pass my name in and then this percent table size what we're doing is we're saying we're dividing it by the size of the table which we've defined to be 100 and so 402 divided by 100 is going to be 4 with a remainder of 2 and when we use this percent sign what we're saying is we want to do this operation but we want the result to be the remainder of that operation so what it's going to do is it's going to take this remainder and it's going to store it in the index variable so this operation here is going to basically be looking for the remainder of this operation and store that remainder in the index variable so now when we return index and we pass my name in, it should um, produce an index variable or an index value of 2. So let's go ahead and run that and make sure that's the case. So we're looking for an index value of 2 now. And now when we run the program, we get exactly that. So it shows the hash function as it's kind of building up to uh, 402. And then it mods it by the size of the uh, hash table. And then it returns an index value of 2. So let's just go ahead and try one more. In the main.cpp file, instead of Paul, let's put Paula. And we'll go ahead and run that program and see what happens. So this should be a little bit different. So notice now that by the time we get to the fourth letter, this would be adding the L, the lowercase l now. We get 402. And so at this point, we have the same hash value, basically. But then we add that lowercase a to the paul, and we end up with 499. Then we mod it by the table size. We basically are grabbing that remainder, and now we have an index value of 99. So index value of 99 corresponds to the name Paula. So if we wanted to enter Paula's information into the hash table, we would place her information in index 99. If we wanted to store my information, which was Paul, then that would have returned the two that we saw previously. We would store my information in index two of our hash table. So anyway, that's kind of a, a nice little introduction on how hash tables work and how you can basically manipulate a string into an integer value and uh, make it fit inside of uh, your hash table. And uh, so basically just modding it by the size of the hash table ensures that you're going to return an index location that's going to be somewhere in your hash table because we're going to build the hash table as an array basically at the heart of the hash table. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and do some more videos on this uh, hash table project. So stay tuned for those. I'll be putting those up in the near future. You guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.